Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite going to start. Oh, oh, hi. It just decided to skip. What are, what are you doing? Okay, it's my Joy-Con. It's got a Joy-Con drift. It's been doing it really badly lately. It's just flipping things. Um, But usually it goes, uh, I guess. No, see, it was, but it went, it was going this way. It's never gone to the right or left before. It's only ever gone up. Anyway, but we're going to start Peter's, or Jupiter, Ju Peter's route can I bite you again? Gee! Okay, no, wow, that's disturbing. Um, I just want to point out, we already know, we already fucking know. Ooh, look at how pretty that is. There are three endings, the sweet and spicy end, sweet end and spicy end, so only Shelby so far has gotten a spicy bad end, okay. Bonus episodes unlock after finishing a sweet and spicy end, his last CG is in the bonus episode three. Um... That's just to unlock the completion CG. Okay. Content warning! Right here in Peter's route. If you liked Peter in the first game, I'd strongly caution against playing his spicy end as it contains a landmine that might ruin the entire game for you. Okay. We already know what it is. Because we already read the trigger warnings and he is the only one that turns into an anthropomorphic animal. Um... There is a landmine spoilers thing, and I'm tempted to click it and read it, but I already know what it says based on that, but at the same time, I don't want to... I'm going to do it. I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to read it to you. We already know. We already know! Implied sexual relations with an anthropomorphic character. Uh, and then that... That... Hi. 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 You can... I know how to do math. Okay. Kent taught me how to do math when we played Amnesia Memories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what we thought. It The ending involves the heroine having implied sexual intercourse with an anthropomorphic character. It includes voice acting as well as a CG. Fun times. Oh, good. Great. We get a CG for that. I, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Sure. Uh, all right. And the voice acting, you know, you know, okay, guys, guys, start thinking of it now, because it'll be a while till we get to the end and we do the, do you want to go back and replay that scene with the voice acting on? <laughs> if we're going to trauma, think about it now, Can prepare, prepare, and then after we get to that scene, then you let me know, please, God, do not play that scene with the voice acting, or hell yes, we need this for science. Science being our dirty, pervy minds. Depending on how traumatized we are by it. Just saying. Anyway. A light of blessings shone through the skies. In the ceremonial room, where only the leader of the gods and I could enter, I knelt. Oh, and we're kneeling before our husband. Oh, oh, hi. Okay. Hello. This is... Oh, okay. Also, he doesn't really have a voice. It was just kind of normal. We didn't really give... I don't remember what it was in the first game, and I don't remember what we've done that two times we saw him. Like, the one time we saw Miss Peter before, but, like, this is a nice CG already off the bat. You know... The game is starting off like, look at this gorgeous fucking CG. Look how hot this man is, and then... Oh, God. Ah, oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. Listen. You know, it's because... Maybe that's why the last, the spicy endings and the last couple of rounds, you're like, these aren't so really, so much spicy, really. And then they're like, really, you know what they're going to, they knew. They were like, we're going to make them not spicy. So people are like, these aren't really spicy. Like, Ryuki's was spicy and these ones are spicy. And then we're going to give them this and they're going to be like, I wish I had never said anything. To be fair, we kind of already knew this was coming when we read the trigger warnings. And yet I still made those comments because I'm not smart. Apparently. Kent may have taught me how to do math, but he didn't teach me how to keep my mouth shut. <sighs> we'll have to work into it. I meant Jupiter's voice. <laughs> uh, I, Jupiter, the leader of the gods, command you. We'll just give him a kind of deepy kind of voice. I guess that works. Anyway, 
Lord Jupiter spoke with immense dignity. Are we wearing a bridal veil, though? I think we are. It felt like a royal crown. It felt like a royal crowning ceremony. I bowed respectfully before Lord Jupiter, who calmly held his hand above my head. Cupid, you are hereby appointed to the throne of Juno as a member of the De Consentes. A bridal gown, the divine artifact of Lady Juno, was bestowed upon me. Along with it came a ring and a pure white veil. Is she, like, missing? Did we say that she was, like, missing or disappeared or what? Did you kill your wife? Beams of light illuminated the room, casting a glow upon the veil. Ah, uh, so this is... When I donned Juno's divine artifact, I felt something entirely different from when I held Cupid's arrow. Or she was like, peace out, I'm leaving. The power of the divine artifact and the wisdom of the De Consentes flowed into me. The artifact became mine. It molded to me, making me Juno. According to the myths, Juno was Lord Jupiter's wife. Well, I mean, that was how you were going to get around that. I was first an angel, and then I became Cupid. Now I had joined the De Consentes as one of the supreme gods. But what I truly desired was to be his wife. I mean, again, I can't blame you right now. This motherfucker is fine as shit. I don't care what's awaiting for me at the, in the spicy... See, that's why they did this. They're like, yeah, yeah, just in case you find out, look at this CG, and you're like, God, this man is fine as fuck, whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, then we have animal sex with him, and it's like... Uh, uh, it, that's why you gave me this CG first off. Two seconds in. I see. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm not... I don't know what to think. Anyway... I looked up, noticing his cheeks flush at the sight of me and the divine artifact. Because he's the sensitive parasite. Well, how do I look? I stood and twirled for him to see. He nodded, his face turning redder. That dignified look of his was gone. Yes, you look beautiful. You're beautiful. You've truly become Juno, my wife. At the sight of me in Juno's dress, Lord Jupiter seemed to be in tears. He's crying and Gil wanted to fuck you hard in a wedding dress. I mean, Jupiter could want that too, but he's like, holding back. <laughs> I mean... Uh... He'd said he'd been lonely, striving to maintain his dignity and living alone as the Supreme God. He was the sensitive parasite, easily scared, but always trying his best to act like a powerful and omnipotent god. It's kind of funny, thinking this goddamn beast of a man is oh, I'm delicate <laughs> okay but now he was no longer alone we would protect humanity together as husband and wife yes I'm your wife now I smiled and he looked as though we might cry again I leapt into his arms and hugged him now I'm just gonna guess before the other the things I don't remember if we uh chi 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 that's the title of this chapter that is the title of this chapter. Last time on Cupid Parasite! Zeus and Jupiter, okay. I'm just saying, Zeus is pretty, don't get me wrong. But I don't, I can't, Jupiter is hotter, way hotter. Hi, I'm Zeus. People everywhere once worshipped me. I'm a big shot god. I don't remember the voice we gave him earlier. Or even in the last game. A lot of folks looked up to me back in the BC era. I was the talk of the town. But my troublesome younger brother got me sealed away, even though I was flawless. <laughs> You'll regret this, Jupiter. You won't be the only one smiling. Guess what's next? Chi turns into a snowman. Stay tuned for next Shh. week's episode. Do you want me to pet you or what? You're biting me. Chi! Oh. It was just a dream. Mm. My sudden shouting must have caused Spacey, lying beside me, to stir in her sleep. I don't want him to sound too much like Shelby, but... While I was watching her sleep, I'd apparently fallen asleep myself. The gods did not need to sleep, yet I dozed off. It was probably because I spent some time in the human realm. I can't remember the last time I had a dream. And of all things, why did I dream about that? I was relieved that it was just a dream, but I still felt uneasy. I hated myself for that. I couldn't shake this feeling. The dream might have been a sign that I was still that sensitive parasite. Jupiter? Spacey woke up and looked me straight in the eyes. 
I felt bad for waking her, but at the same time, I found my fears dissipate at the sound of her voice. I'm sorry I disturbed you. It's okay. I must have just dozed off. Is something wrong? No, uh... She looked at me curiously, and not sure how to reply, I averted my gaze. Also, you gave him heterochromia. That's like second best to glasses. I'm just saying, they don't do that enough in games. Glasses? We love. Heterochromia, hot as fuck. I love it too. But again, they don't do it a lot. But seeing the face of my beloved wife, I realized that I wanted to depend on her. I mean, and again, this man's gorgeous! Jesus! I mean, he is a god, so... I embraced her and rested my head on her shoulder. I had a dream about the time I sealed Ze sealed away Zeus. Ze oh, Zeus, my elder twin brother, was once the leader of the gods. Humans worshipped him, and he was featured in countless myths. He was the true supreme god. The throne I now held was rightfully his. He was more suited for it than I was. Are we gonna- is that gonna be the thing? We're gonna give Zeus the throne, and then you're gonna go just be Peter and live in the human realm and be normal? Because, like... How is that going to work with me being Juno? You know what I mean now? However, I sealed him away because he wanted to erase all other gods and be the only god worshipped by humans. I mean, that's a little fucked up. I'm about 2,500 years ago. I'm assuming we're still Zeus, but... Uh, Zeus. So I'm assuming we're still Jupiter, but... <laughs> all other gods shall perish. Brother, No! If you take away humans and autonomy... Why not? Humans are only good for worshipping the gods. They shall praise my name and live like cattle. Mars, Poseidon, even you, Jupiter, the imposter. None of you are needed any longer. Disappear! It appears that you can't be convinced. Everyone, it's time. Understood! We, the remaining gods, united to seal the all-powerful Zeus, allowing peace to return to the world. Or so we thought. We know he got out, because, like, he was in, a uh, Marinese's route. Oh, also, probably in Jupiter's route in the last game. I don't remember it! I, I really don't. I remember Bumblepig. And, like, being proud that they made Gil not a douche. He's an idiot. And, like, really obsessed. But, like, for being overprotective, childhood friend love, like, he wasn't, like, cunty about it. You were like, you know what? They did him well. I remember that. And I remember certain other things. But I don't really remember. I don't remember Jupiter's route. My brain is like, nope. Don't remember Peter Jupiter. I remember him being in the game. I just don't remember anything about it. But Zeus was in Marinese's route. And also, like, okay. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe vaguely remember him being part of it, and I don't remember what happened, but... Despite being ze being sealed, Zeus returned. He devoured gods, including Juno and Pluto, stealing their powers to complete his final form. Ah. Well, that explains it. The Twelve Olympians were no more, and my brother Zeus had regained his power. He was mightier than ever before. I wanted to flee. Being the sensitive parasite, how could I face him? But when he kidnapped Cupid, I could no longer stand still. I had to take action. I couldn't allow humanity to fall victim to Zeus. So I decided to fight him as a member of the Parasite Six. So, like, I'm assuming, did he... Because wasn't Juno missing for a while? Because it's really weird that, like, Juno is supposedly Jupiter's wife. But then it's like, but then... He ate my wife, but then he touched Cupid, and I was like, hell no, bitch. And it's like, ah. But I feel like the Juno... But wasn't it like, oh, Juno's been missing for a while or something? And they just had no idea what happened? Am I misremembering? Anyway. Agape. Pragma. Eros. Ludus. Mania! Mania! This is Mania. Mania. Why am I reading it weird? It's his accent. I can't. Anyway. Is it storage? Anyway. That. Whatever it is. The six forms of love. Humans, a god, and a demon join forces to seal Zeus once again. Okay, well, so they're calling him a demon. But wasn't he originally an angel? Alan. Yes. 
This approach was risky. If Zeus did not detest the concept of love, we would have failed. Also, one member of our team was a demon. Though a former angel, he was still a demon. If he was struck by Zeus's divine artifact, he could have been seriously injured or even erased. But his paired angel was the god Cupid. She had her arrows, which allowed him to trust fully in our plan. In the end, the seal was, was a success. The six forms of love were enough to turn Zeus back into stone. Farewell, Zeus. So much for the all-powerful god. Rest in peace. We know he's not really dead, though, because he was in Marinese's route, so I'm sure he'll play a part in this. And they went, well, I mean, they're going to flash back because it helps you remember what happened, but also pertinent. That was fun. Oh my god. Uh... No! You shall pay! You shall pay for this, Jupiter! We knew for sure that Zeus was sealed once more, so everything should be fine. Yet I was still afraid. I would shudder thinking about it, and I even had nightmares. Sensing my fear, she giggled and whispered in my ear. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm with you. She patted my back with her warm hand. Chee! You can't have him say chee without being like, chee! Without being ad adorably ridiculous, so. Come here. And when she called me in such a gentle way, I couldn't hold back any longer. Chee! Oh my god. Oh dear god. Oh, we should, uh, you know what? If you played this and didn't have the trigger warnings, you should have fully fucking been warned right here. You should have been, like, afraid. Something deep in your soul should have been like, oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then the game doesn't go there, and you're like, oh, thank God. And then it does, and then you're like, shit, I knew it all along. I'm just saying. I'm just saying something deep in your soul should have sensed what was coming from this. I instinctively turned into Chi and nuzzled my face against her chest. With her arms around my whole body, I felt so relieved that I wanted to cry. Oh, good lord. Chee! Chee! That dream must have terrified him. His little body was still trembling, so I held him tightly and stroked his little head. I mean, listen, I would... I can't hold my bird tightly like that, but I'll stroke his little head and snuggle him. But, like, I don't want him to turn into, like, some... Like, no, that's creepy and weird. It's different. Your pet is your child. Like, oh, did you kill me? Not like some hot dude you want to have sex. Like, that's... I know that there are games like that. Don't get me wrong. Dandelion and a couple of other, like, that some that were in... The... Didn't we play one? Did we play My Secret Pets? Or is that just one I have in the, like, I don't know. But there's several of them. I don't know who played them. Well, Kitty Love kind of counted, didn't it? We did play that one, and that was like, dudes turning into cats. But it was, this This is somehow different. This is a little bit different. They weren't our pets that we, like, take care of, and then they turn into hot, like, it's still weird. Like, listen, listen, I will fuck my brother in these games, but I draw the line at your pets, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> but here we are, oh, God. I'm going to be touring this whole route because Jupiter is goddamn gorgeous. Like, they drew him hot as shit. But then he's going to do this and it's like, look at you. You're ridiculous. Turn it into, oh, God, I know what's coming. I'm disturbed. So, yeah. A year had passed since I became Juno. During that time, I had learned so much. Thanks to the wi wisdom of my divine artifact, I was able to guide humans toward marriage. My role as Lady Juno was entirely different from my role as Cupid. As a member of the Deconsentes that watches over humans, I would have been overwhelmed by the responsibility if it weren't for Jupiter. Zeus. Jupiter was still afraid of him. I knew that a lot of things had to be done to seal him away. I was once Cupid, but then I transformed into Juno and became Jupiter's wife. But before that, I studied abroad in the human realm and met various people. What happened? A few years ago, when I was still Cupid, I descended to the human realm with Chi to begin my studies. I thought Chi was Lord Jupiter's divine beast. Kind of is. I hadn't realized that Chi was actually Lord Jupiter. I just lived life with him in the human realm. That makes it even more like... Since I was unaware of Chi's true identity, I used him like a personal massage machine, and we slept in the same bed. 
I mean, that sounds disturbing when you phrase it like that, but it's more like shoulder massages, but it's still disturbing. I treated Lord Jupiter like any other divine beast. If I had known, I wouldn't have done that out of respect for Lord Jupiter, leader of the gods. But I didn't know. I don't think he wanted you to know. It is kind of funny when you think about it, though. Then one day, a man appeared before me. Yes, I am Peter Flag. Is it Peter Flag? Flag? Is that what we're calling Flag? Was it Flag? I don't know. Call me Peter. A man who called himself Peter Flag joined Cupid Corps as an intern, just like me. Well, he was the camera guy for whatever, and I do like how they did it. Like, you knew, I mean, you knew the whole fucking time. He was easily frightened and didn't show how to, and didn't know how to use electronic devices. And yet, he was the camera guy at Parasite House. That sounds a lot. I discovered that he was Chi when I accidentally shot him with Cupid's arrow. Chi! Huh? That day I shot him with the golden arrow that I used to match human couples. Chi had suddenly jumped in front of me and gotten hit. Chi! Chi had fallen and Peter Flagg had suddenly appeared in his place. See, I don't remember this. I'm glad they did a flashback. Cupid, I love you. That misfire caused him to fall in love. Chi, or rather Peter, and I became lovers for 30 days. And you didn't know it was Jupiter. So much happened after that day. We worked hard together as interns and enjoyed going on dates to the movies together. We even made an appearance on the Parasite 6 program on TV. And then, I had my first kiss. I, Cupid, who had never experienced love, had kissed a man who had fallen in love with me because of my golden arrow. We didn't stop after one kiss. I was like, I saw kissed and I said, yeah, okay. We didn't stop after one kiss. My brain, my eyes were already on we kissed again, and I read kissed instead of kiss, and it sounded stupid. I'm sorry. We kissed again to confirm our feelings for each other. That was when I realized this was what humans called love or romance. In the human world, there were six forms of love. After learning that, I decided to become the new Lady Juno among the Twelve Olympians, but you didn't know that Peter was Jupiter at the time. Did she? When did she figure that out? Because she didn't mention that. I don't remember. Chi! I had gotten lost in my thoughts while holding Chi. He made a sound and looked up at me. Holding him under his arms, I playfully lifted his tiny body. Chi! His wings fluttered happily. He seemed to enjoy it. It's like one thing when Chi is Chi, and it's like to do his voice and like play around like whatever, even though you know. You like, you know it's Jupiter and you know he's been like whatever. But it's a whole other thing when like he just transformed from your hot husband into the and it feels weird right now. The whole other parts of the game or any other route, if he was there, you're like, whatever. Like, you know, but like, eh, whatever. She doesn't know. But like the fact that she knows and you know and we all know and it's weird. It's just weird. It's going to get weirder, guys. Oh, dear God. He gently moved his front legs and landed, transforming back to his true form. Phew. <laughs> Feeling better. Oh, oh. Th thank you. You're welcome. There was a pause. Even after reverting to Jupiter, he seemed uneasy. He opened and closed his mouth a few times like he was about to say something. From the look on his face, he seemed depressed. I do love the fact, though, that they made, like, Jupiter shy and awkward and just just an awkward nerd. Super fucking ridiculously hot awkward nerd. I'm sorry. I keep reverting to that form. It seemed like turning into Chi was bothering him. You don't have to worry about it. You can turn into Chi more. Oh, dear God. The Oh, dear. Oh, fuck me. This is the spicy answer, isn't it? You can turn into Chi more. Oh, God. I feel gross. That's probably the right answer. Part of me wants that to be the answer because it makes me uncomfortable and it'd be kind of funny. Some, like, this is why we name our character Spacey. I love you, Spacey. It's still awkward. It's been like six fucking years. But it's awkward as fuck still. Never get over it. Yeah. Okay. Deep down, I hope he transformed more often. Oh, God. Girl, you have got some issues. We thought Gil had issues. You got the fucking... You got a library full of fucking back issues. Jesus. In fact... I liked him in that form. It would make me sad if I never got to hold Chi again. I shook my head and smiled. I 
don't mind at all. Your fluffy form's really cute. Yeah, you know it's a spicy. Oh, that's absolutely because we know what happens in the spicy and <laughs> fluffy. But I hugged him again. This time protectively. Look at his adorable face. Because he's like, you're so cute and fluffy. And he's like, wait, what? Well, I don't hate it, but I don't... Wait, what? Oh. I nestled my face against his chest so I could hear his heartbeat. I want to be a better leader of the gods. Someone who won't cause you any worry. His voice trembled. I knew he was embarrassed, so I gave him a hug to comfort him. There's nothing to worry about. After all, I love Chi. Yeah, you're gonna love Chi pretty fucking intensely. And guys, I'm never gonna get over it. I can't let it go. Chi. Oh, is he supposed to be saying Chi? Every time he says the word Chi. Chi. <sighs> guys. Guys. Can I just... We just point out the parallel. Okay, I'm just saying. Yes, in Radiant Tail, we had Rady. He was our husband, and we f pet him, and we forced him to let him pet us and everything. We didn't do anything weird and creepy and inappropriate, though. It was like, I am going to pet you like a fluffy animal and cuddle you, and then, okay, anyway, back to being mine. And he felt awkward. It there was a reason they get Nobuhiko Okamoto to do these roles, because he's really good at doing... Super sexy voice and then adorable voice. And you know that's what he's doing. But, you know, sir, you're going to be typecast as the guy who plays the bestiality roles now. You do realize that because, like, Rady, we didn't go there. But, like, I'm just saying, sir, sir, sir. And then you're also Yang, which is pretty fucking funny. I just, these things pop into my head every once in a while when I'm like, sir, okay. We're never going to get through his route because I'm just going to be, I'm just, I don't know if I want to. Like, I want to. I do. But I don't, because I don't want to get to the, I want to get to that ending because I want to, I want to be traumatized with you. We need to, we're in this together, guys. But I also don't want to get there at all because I'm traumatized already. I'm concerned. All I'm saying is if we get to that end and I'm like, and it's like, oh, well, and I'm like, that's it. I, it is, I, I fully expect this to be like, oh God, why am I reading this? What did I do? I need to drink. I, I want it. I fully expect it to be extremely uncomfortable to experience slash read. And I have to read it out loud. Sweet Jesus. When we get to that part, guys, please, please do not have the volume of headphones in, in a closet. Do not, do not let anybody walk into the room and hear me reading this because that's embarrassing as shit. Okay, I'm already embarrassed for this. But if we get there and it's not extremely embarrassing, I'm going to be disappointed because I've set myself up for this, okay? Oh, Lord. Anyway. Did I read this even so I want to become stronger? Well, we did now. There you go. No, I will definitely become stronger. I'll be the leader who ensures your peace. His words of determination didn't match the lack of confidence in his face. I <laughs> mean, it's kind of adorable. I could tell that he still seemed worried about the dream he had. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is like, yes, I will be strong. You're like, you're so cute and adorable and almost useless. I love it. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. But we can grow stronger together. Gee, but I need to be the one protecting you. He grabbed my arm and pulled me close. It's not enough as it is. Oh. He lifted my chin and stole a kiss. Oh. I'm not moaning, though. As we kissed, my heart started beating faster. His dejected look from earlier melted away. Our kisses seemed to boost his confidence. Despite his insecurities, he was a fierce and mighty god. That part of him would, revel would, would, would reveal itself whenever we kissed, and... I'm just saying, I know he's awkward, but, like, I'm gonna need this man to just rip off my dress. I love you. I love you, Spacey. I felt safe in his arms. My heart fluttered with unending love for him. Love felt precious, and he was the one who taught me that. 
I wanted to protect humanity together with him for eternity. I cherish the joy of being with him as the goddess of marriage. Because his brother ate his other wife. Jeez, determination! I do love that the background, like, is CG's from the prior game, and that one of them is Chi, like, when she's squeezing him and is absolutely like, What the fuck? It's amazing. Check it out next time we get a title card. If you didn't see it already. It was our duty to watch over the world below. Big changes were happening in Celestia and Heaven. Oh, he's wearing his mask. That's the plan for this month. And make sure you check your schedules carefully. Okay! Lord Jupiter managed the Cupids as they went about their duties. Don't bite my headset, bitch. Do you mean a jackass? Except for the Deconsentes, the gods were now working in shifts. There were now around 100 Cupids and over 150 Nikes. A growing number of angels had become appointed as gods and given responsibilities. The previous system that had been established for millennia went through a major overhaul. It took a lot of work. Teaching multiple angels how to use divine artifacts was challenging, and many gods were resistant to change. But we succeeded. With the current system, there were many cupids instead of one. Phew. Managing shifts is tough. After watching the cupids leave, Jupiter sighed to himself. He was holding a shift list in his hand. We'd made it together, utilizing our experience working at Cupid Corps. <laughs> Cupid 4 is on Sunday and Saturday. Cupid 47, or is that 17? Cupid 17 is only on on Friday. Cupid 45 is also on Friday. Cupid 97 and Cupid 4 work together all the time. Oh, they, but that's cute. They actually work like together. So 45 and 76 are on together. Nobody's on Wednesday or Thursday. What the fuck? And what the hell's with the badger drawn on the side? Like, what is that? I hadn't realized those managers back at Cupid Corps were always dealing with this kind of thing. And they deserve respect for the work they do. <laughs> You've improved as a manager, though. Am I? Recently, Cupid number 53 demanded a schedule change because Cupid 5 kept slacking off. Slacking off? Since the number of gods has increased, some have started to cut corners, even though there's still work to be done. This place is becoming more and more like the human realm. My studies in the human realm, the revival and subsequent defeat of Zeus, all the things led to changes in society of Celestia. The society of gods that remained unchanged for millennia was now entirely different, but many gods resisted this change. <sighs> I bet Mercury's got some comments for me again. Lord Mercury is strict when it comes to work. Lord Mercury decided which angels were suitable for godhood. He didn't agree to the reforms and always found things to report. It's a lot of work, but... I still believe that this is the right path for Celestia. I think Lord Mercury will understand eventually. Thanks to the reforms, the lifespans of Cupids had extended exponentially. The use of golden and leaden arrows were balanced. Shifts reduced strain on individual Cupids, and we worked out a retirement plan. Though not a perfect system, it was still an improvement from a system in which the role of Cupid was expendable. And do you really think so? I hope that's the case. Jupiter seemed encouraged by my words. He looked at me meaningfully, but... Lord Jupiter, where are you? There's something I must confirm with you. Chi! Upon hearing the voice of Lord Mercury, Jupiter turned into Chi and ran away. Her husband is a beautiful, beautiful man, but also a little bitch. Kind of, I, I'm kind of here for it. Like, I can't, I can't deny it. Like... Something about this weak little bitch that you're like, you are such a bitch. You are so motherfucking... Like, God damn it. Hike your tits up and be a woman about this. Go out. Deal with him. What the hell? I love it, though. Goddamn love it. Don't know. Why? Why? It's like Raul is such a fucking dumb... You're like, he... Well, okay, he's got brain cells when it comes to mythology, but it's like, you're God, you're an idiot, and I love you. There's something about this game that does weird things. The game does weird things. And it does weird things to you. Okay? Because normally Raul is not my type. In this game, I love that himbo so much. And Jupiter is so fucking useless. But he's so goddamn pretty. You're like, God, you're hot. And you're kind of an idiot. Like, you just... God, you're so weak. 
He's such a little bitch. But God, I love it. I'm like, I'm kind of turned on by it. Stop it. But turn back into a hot man. None of this. Chi! Although we love Chi, don't get me wrong. So it is kind of funny that he freaks out and turns into Chi. Uh, after I turned into Chi and fled, I held my head between my hands once I confirmed that I was alone. I did it again. I've been so skittish lately. I know, I love it. It's kind of adorable. It wasn't this bad before. I didn't change form so easily. I was Chi in the human realm. And those days were comforting to me, so maybe that's why I instinctively took this form when startled. Or perhaps Zeus's revival back then had permanently heightened my sense of danger. No. It's probably both. I would never forget the fear I felt when I had detected Zeus's presence for the first time in 2,500 years. And the fear was unbearable. Every hair on my body stood on end. And that was probably why I felt restless and why I kept turning into Chi so easily. I must fix this or she may get sick of me. Chi? Chi? I heard her call out to me from behind and I nearly turned into Chi again. I felt like crying, but I managed to stay as I was. I could see the concern in her face as she came to check on me. peeked into the room and saw Jupiter by himself, looking depressed. He seemed dejected, which was unlike his usual persona as the dignified leader of the gods. I wanted to come over and give him a hug. <laughs> Don't worry. I told Lord Mercury that you're busy right now and you'll speak to him later. Th thank you. I got startled and... I shouldn't make excuses, but I truly planned on returning right away. Jupiter stumbled over his words as his tone of voice grew soft. He leaned into my arm, still looking seriously depressed. I'm sorry. I really want to fix this bad habit of mine. Really? Uh, of course. Otherwise, I'll never get any work done. But that sensitive parasite side of him seemed to be something he'd had since he was a child. Growing up, he was told to behave or else he would be found by Kronos and swallowed whole. He said it caused him to be more sensitive to danger. But it's a good thing too, right? It must have helped you out sometimes. Well, I suppose so. When Zeus attacked you, you could sense him and were able to escape. I think it's fine to stay as you are. Stay this way? Yeah, being the sensitive parasite is an asset. Knowing when danger is coming is a crucial skill for the leader of the gods. When problems arise, you'll be able to overcome them. Spacey... Oh! Jupiter gently released himself from my embrace and embraced me instead. Thank you, Spacey. He hugged me with all of his strength. It was so tight I felt a bit suffocated. It might be easier on my body if he turned into Chi. But his love for me made me happy nonetheless. <laughs> I reached to pat him on the head, wanting to express that everything would be alright. As we embraced, I heard an exaggerated sigh coming from behind us. <sighs> Lady Juno, you should have brought Lord Jupiter to me as soon as you found him. Oh. Jupiter hastily pulled away and put his ma and put on his mask. After a pause, he cleared his throat awkwardly. It's so funny. He's like, "Put my mask on." Oh, yes, I am. Like, does he have? They know what you. They know what you look like. But it's like, I'm on duty. I wear the mask. I'm off duty. Not wearing the mask. Do you see the mask on this face, Mercury? I'm off duty. I was just about to ask her where you were, Mercury. We can talk about your concerns over there. Yes, thank you. I'd like to discuss recent particip oh precipitation levels in the human realm. Rain? Bro! Jupiter walked with Lord Mercury as they continued to, dis to discuss his concerns. He looked so dignified. It matched the image of him that I had when I was still Cupid. It was hard to believe he was the type to run away when being scolded. He must have been keeping the side of him a secret from everyone. Hmm, he just called me Lady Juno. Aside from Jupiter, the other gods now called me Lady Juno. It would take a while to get used to my new name. I had been called Cupid by my fellow gods for so long, it still didn't feel real. Jupiter still called me by my name from the human realm, Spacey. Since my beloved called me by that name, I had a special attachment to it. I do too. 
Just saying. I used to be Cupid, the god of matchmaking, but I had stepped into the role of Juno, the goddess of marriage. As one of the Twelve Olympians, my duty was to oversee all marriages in the human realm. I thought that life would pass by leisurely, but... When I became one of the Twelve Olympians, my life became hectic. My duties as Juno were more demanding than my duties as Cupid. I may have been the goddess of marriage, but I sought to foster true love rather than focus on marriage rates. In recent years, more couples chose not to marry, but were still deeply in love. The work was rewarding. I supported love between humans every single day. I'd been the god of matchmaking my whole life. Now that I was the goddess of marriage, my new goals weren't all that different. I was so passionate about human marriage that I'd forgotten that I also had gotten married. Yeah, I know, the game's forgotten too. It's going to save all the sexy times for the end that we don't want to read. Juno, I mean, Spacey, can I have a little of your time? Jupiter, what's with the formality? Did something happen? Well, um... I... <laughs> the man is like, can we have sex for fuck's sake? I feel like, because, like, I don't remember them ever doing anything in the first game. And, you know, it... I'm assuming nothing happened. And I don't know if anything's happened. Like, or it hasn't happened for a while anyway. Because he's like, we're married, right? So we can have sex, right? Okay, hello? <laughs> like, I just wanted to clarify. We are husband and wife now. Do I have that correct? That's what I thought we were. Right, right. I'm glad we both thought the same. <laughs> After that grand ceremony, how could I forget? Uh, but... That was your ascension to the Divine Throne, not our wedding. We're married now, but we haven't had a wedding ceremony or honeymoon. Oh, a wedding ceremony and honeymoon? I'd always wanted to partake in such wonderful human traditions, but it had completely slipped my mind. I was already satisfied just being his wife. The shift system's now stable, and we've got enough staff to cover the workload. And maybe late, but... How about we at least take some time off for our honeymoon? Uh, to Los York, maybe? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. That's fine. I know we're gonna have to have some Peter time, right? But we also need to get some Jupiter time. Look, if I'm gonna have to have sex with G, I can't believe I had to say that out loud right now, and I'm really disturbed by this. We better get to bang this man in this form, is all I'm saying. Listen, we're going all out. All or nothing, bitches. You can't give me Peter and G and not give me Jupiter. I'm just saying. Rude. A honeymoon in Los York. When I said it out loud, the idea of a honeymoon made my heart swell. Even though we'd already been married for a while, we still deserved that trip. So I nodded with a warm smile. It would be our very first vacation as a couple. Our honeymoon. Los York, with its bustling streets, fashionable crowds, and colorful cars, awaited us. This familiar place felt like our second home. We were happy to return to such an elegant city for our honeymoon, and you know he's in Peter form, so obviously. Wow, Los York sure has changed. Yes, I haven't felt this atmosphere in a while. Everywhere I looked, there were crowds of people. With the new system in Celestia, I'd seen so many cupids, so I was used to crowds. But a crowd of humans was different. <laughs> this is so exciting, right, Peter? Yes. You're right. Jupiter, now in the form of Peter, smiled gently and put an arm around my shoulder. We descended upon the human realm, so we were currently Peter and Spacey, not Lord Jupiter and Lady Juno. Or Lord Jupiter and Spacey. Jupiter, Peter, I mean, come on, makes sense. Since it was a human tradition, we planned to enjoy our honeymoon in human form. Walking side by side, we blended in with other couples, exploring downtown Los York. I mean, could you imagine if you showed up in your fucking, like... God attire? You'd look ridiculous. Well, people would think you were cosplaying, so you'd actually probably be fine. To be fair, I dress and look ridiculous, so whatevs. So, where do you want to go first? Also, look at how Minerva shows up. Just saying. Nobody notices. Well, it's been a while, so I want to go to Starbuckus to get their white mocha. Then let's go! Yes. It felt nice to, it felt nice to stroll through Lost York after such a long time. As we enjoyed the sweetness of our white mochas, we searched for new tourist spots to visit in the city. Guess where? After visiting some of those spots, we decided to visit Cupid Corps, where we both used to work as interns. Oh, I thought we were going to Maldonuts. 
or Mo Mo Donuts, Mao Donuts, like mowing the lawn. I don't know. However, as we approached the building, the weather started to change. The sky turned cloudy and a cold wind began to blow. Soon enough, it started snowing. Is it January? Because that makes sense. Oh, it's snowing! It was sunny just moments ago. It's unusual for it to snow in Lost York. Oh, that's true. Technically, Lost York is there like... I'm thinking of Lost York as like New York, but it's like Los Angeles. So like, what type of weather does it take? Well, there's beaches and stuff. Eh, I don't know. Also, when they showed the map, it is more like Los Angeles. With New York twists. You're right. I think it's the first time I've seen snow in Lost York. Oh, this doesn't bode well. I looked up to see even more snow gently falling on our heads. The snow glowed magically as it reflected the light around us. Is it fake snow? Are you cold? I'm okay for now. But just as I said that, a sharp gust of wind hit me. I quickly wrapped my arms around myself. Never mind. It's suddenly so cold now. You're right. The temperature dropped so suddenly. We should have seen it coming. It was snowing, after all. I started to get goosebumps. This is weird. I was shivering so much that Peter held me from behind to block the wind. Uh, are you okay? He looked like he was shivering a bit, too. No, this is actually too cold. Let's hurry up and buy some coats or something. Yeah, you're right. We dashed into a nearby store, our teeth chattering from the cold. Inside the store, someone had cranked up the heater, thankfully. The warmth enveloped us. Ugh, it was so cold outside! Phew, I almost panicked. I wasn't prepared for it to get cold so fast. Hmm. This store sells both men's and women's clothes. Let's find something warm for both of us. Right, first we should get coats. Oh, and maybe some scarves and hats? Brr, it's so cold! More people who had dressed lightly that day rushed into the store and searched for something warm. It's been cold all month, but I let my guard down because it was warm until noon. I listened to their conversations as the other customers started to pick out scarves and hats. Looking around the store, I noticed that the store was stocked with plenty of winter wear. It seemed like the weather in Lost York had gotten progressively colder during the winter seasons, at least since we'd last visited. Hey, see that coat? It's so cute! It looks like it's for a dog. I thought it'd be cute if Chi wore it. The dog coat was reindeer theme. It looked like it would fit Chi perfectly. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't... Listen, we're gonna get an inappropriate Chi CG at the end, okay? I don't want to waste all of our Jupiter CGs on, like, Chi. But if you buy a goddamn reindeer coat and put it on Chi, and we don't get to see that, I'm going to be a little fucking mad. So it better be on his sprite at least, okay, is all I'm saying. Every time with Chi. Stop treating me like a divine beast. Peter puffed his cheeks and pouted, looking a little offended as I put the dog coat back on the rack. <laughs> Just teasing. Sorry. It didn't sound like a joke to me. After choosing our coats, we headed to the register for checkout. That was when a certain poster caught my eye. It showcased a Christmas market, even hosted in Lost event hosted in Lost York Park, with shop stalls and holiday lights. Okay, so it's winter. I mean, we figured, but okay, it's like December at least. Look, Peter, they're having a Christmas market. Christmas market? Yeah, it's happening tonight. We started throwing this event last year. It's a 10-day event. There will be tons of shop stalls. You should check it out. Shop stalls? That sounds like fun. Wanna go? Yes, let's. It's our honeymoon, after all. He smiled so brightly at the idea. He was right. It was our honeymoon. I was happy he cared so deeply about it. Naturally, I responded with a smile of my own. Soon after we left the store, we arrived at Lost York Park. We were like, fuck Cupid Core. Fuck going to visit everybody. Whatever. Ah... And a Christmas market started today. It seems like I'll be single again this Christmas. Sorry, Gil. I want to pat him on the head and be like, I'm sorry. Gil, I'm sorry. Your route was good and you had some good CGs, sweetie. On second thought, I've never seen it snow in Lost York before. Ugh, the loneliness stings more when it's cold. And then I... Hey, what's up, Gil? Look at my odd husband who's 
also a fucking hot mess. Listen, Gil at least had it put together. The only thing he was a hot mess about was me. And that was kind of hot. Not gonna lie. Maybe I should join Cupid Core. Oh, marriage goddess. And watch over me. Hey, Gil! Wow! Gee! They wore the big puffy coats we just bought as we visited Lost York Park. With all the decorations, it looked like a different world. I like Peter and his coat. A big Christmas tree stood tall in the center of the park. Food stalls sold holiday cookies, spiced wine, and schnitzels. There was a stall selling wooden mugs, too. Everything about the atmosphere made it feel like a true Christmas market. Humans are incredible. Who knew they'd come up with such a festival? What's that? Uh, the sign reads, Leb... Lebuk? Lebuk? Leb... Kucha? Lebuk? I don't know, it's a spice cookie. Leb... I can't, I can't even. My brain does not want to put a B and a K together. Le Kuchin? Le Kuchin? It's definitely not English. Whatever kind of fancy spicy cookie it is. I don't know how to pronounce that. Anyway, that kind of cookie. It looks ordinary, but it's spicy. It smells sweet to me. The shop next to it is hot chocolate. Oh, look at the cream piled on that hot chocolate. Our excitement grew as we explored every stall. We'd only left Lost York a few years ago, but everything still felt so fresh and exciting. We wondered what to do next. Look at the Matroshka. Look at the molten cakes. Matroshka. I know. I never didn't know it was spelled that way, but I could figure it out. Because that looks like Matryoshka, but it's Matroshka. Matroshkas. Those are the little dolls with, like, another one inside, and another one inside, and another one inside, and another one inside, right? That's not what they are? Is that what the... Whatever. That's what I'm thinking. But I know the name, anyway. Uh... The, I would think that's the spicy choice, and the molten cakes is sweet. You know what I mean? Because cakes are sweet. But maybe that's... The, I don't know. I would say look at the cakes. Yeah, look at the molten cakes. Kind of want to look. I kind of want to look at the Matryoshka dolls, but whatever. A sweet scent led my eyes to another stall. Wow! So this round cake is called a molten cake. It has melted melted chocolate inside. It says here they use the world's best cocoa. Wow, that looks good. You know there was a time when cocoa beans were given as offerings to the gods. We should take some home as gifts. Cacao beans. I read that wrong, but whatever. <laughs> Imagine giving it out in Celestia. Sweet, darling. Well, it would cause everyone to get drunk and wreak havoc, but still. Ah, uh, okay, that's... Okay, so that answers Gil's thing. I couldn't remember, but... Well, we figured it out in Gil's route, but yes, now we know. I smell something juicy coming from over there. Oh, it smells delicious. So when he wants... Mochas or his white mocha or ma oh was it matcha? What did he say for the drink before? Then you're getting drunk. You're getting tipsy is what it is. If you're like, oh, let's drink some hot chocolate. Getting drunk. Gonna get tipsy on hot chocolate. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We were day drinking. I don't remember what we had. Maybe it was matcha and my brain said mocha. I don't know. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. Should we grab a bite? Yes. We went around the various stalls and bought a bunch of different foods to try. <gasps> Look, a little CG. Oh my god, he, but it's a CG with... And he's messy. He's such a fucking mess with food all over his face. Why do they gotta do this? She looks so adorable. Look at her with her little cup looking all pretty. And he's a fucking mess. They did the same thing with Gil in one of his CGs. Why are you gonna make him look... He is already a mess. You don't need food all over his face. Come on. You know because you know some of the other CGs are going to be like Chi or something. And it's like, don't mess with me, game. Wow. We set the food we bought on the park table and dug in. Peter couldn't stop smiling at the feast. She looks gorgeous in the CG, though. Hmm, this is good. Very good. Mm, this drink is good, too. It's making me feel all warm inside. Munch, munch, munch. This is great. What do you call this? Uh, that one is... It looks like it's called some type of bratwurst. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that either. I see. Mm -hmm. Munching more. It's delicious. 
Is Spacey have some? <laughs> then can I have a bite? Sh sure. We wanted to sample everything, so we shared all our purchases. Oh, she's going to bite his bratwurst and send the man over the moon. I'm just saying. Hmm. It was delicious. Maybe that's what that face is about. He's like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Listen, you got to deal with it now because it's going to get weirder. S see? Yes, it's very delicious. Oh, and this one too. Peter seemed to be enjoying the potato pancake called a, I cannot. Anyway, the potato pancake quite a bit. <laughs> damn you, game. God damn you. I'm putting all the words in I can't pronounce. Like, I don't. <laughs> it stuffed his face in a manner that I'd never imagined him doing as the dignified leader of Celestia. He ain't dignified right now. It was clear from his smile he was able to relax here in the human realm with me. He was making the same face he made back then as Peter the intern. Peter was so different from Jupiter. I surmised that in Celestia he was under more stress, which was why he was usually so tense. After all, he's the leader of the gods. Ow, that's my neck, don't bite it. As the leader of the Deconsentes, he had a huge role to fill. He didn't want to be the he didn't want to let the other gods down, and he felt the need to surpass his elder brother. He'd been carrying that burden all along. That was why I was glad he could relax while we were in the human realm. Besides, we were on our honeymoon. This something drink is so good. Kinder punch it? Is it some kind of punch? I'm assuming that... Punch? Punch? That's punch. Kinder punch? Kinder punch? Is that German? I don't know. <laughs> this cream puff too. Thank God she called it a cream puff. I can pronounce that. We drank and feasted as the snow continued to fall around us. Despite the cold, we warmed ourselves up with our new coats and some hot drinks. In the end, our first Christmas market had turned out to be a wonderful experience. And you got ten days left of it, so. After indulging to our heart's content, our bellies felt full. Should we head to the hotel? You're right. It's late. As much as I want to stay, we probably should. I checked the time and our hotel's location for the night. We'd booked a regular room at a hotel on 2nd Avenue. It was peak holiday season, so most places were already booked up. I'd like to try out a honeymoon suite someday. I didn't want to leave either, but we started to head toward the exit. But Peter paused suddenly. Wait, I want to try the spiced wine. Is that okay? You haven't yet? Sure, let's get some. I can go for another round. We went to look for the same stall we found earlier that was selling the spiced wine. But we couldn't find it anywhere. Had they closed already? So we bought it from a different stall. Seemed like it would be just as good. Here you go. Thank you. So this is spiced wine. Hmm. Smells a bit strong. I took a sip of the wine and tasted the spice. Wow, this stall really went extra on the spices. Hmm. It looks good. Well, let's give it a try. <clears throat> Peter took one sip, and after a moment, he froze and jumped suddenly. Gee! Whoa! I thought I heard an explosion, and all the lights in the park suddenly went out. Amidst the sudden blackout, all of Lost York Park was buzzing with confusion. What did you do? My husband is so useless. That, that was spicy. My tongue is numb. What is this flavor? Wait, hold on. Didn't the lights just go out? Despite Peter's panicked reaction to the spiced wine, I was more startled by the blackout. But the lights came back quickly. Thank goodness it's back. Oh no, the star in the tree is broken! P Peter, what did you do? Huh? Hey! I followed the eyes of the crowd and looked up to see smoke coming out of the top of the tree. The tree looked a bit charred and the star that once adorned it had vanished. Could it be that Peter's reaction caused a lightning strike? Yes. Did anyone else see that lightning? The weather's gone crazy. It's already snowing and out lightning? Feels like a bad omen. Gee! Gee! Peter looked shocked, then very depressed. I, I did it again. Wait, so that lightning was you, Peter? Y yes. That spicy drink surprised me and I couldn't help it. Does he mean the spice and the wine? 
I also agree that they use too many spices in the wine. But I didn't know that a god can unleash a lightning strike just from a spicy surprise. We're gonna get a spicy surprise! I don't even want to know what we're gonna unleash with that spicy su I'm s I am sorry about that. Oh no. I destroyed the star of the Christmas market. Ugh. Turning into chi is one thing, but a lightning strike? What should I do? Hmm. Peter seemed to be genuinely bothered by this, so I considered our options. I recalled speaking to a college friend of mine who started to enjoy spicy food after repeated exposure. It was shocking at first, but maybe he can develop a tolerance. People also claim that watching lots of horror movies made them less frightening over time. When I mentioned this to Peter, his eyes lit up. A tolerance. So I should train to become more resilient. Hmm, I see. Training it is. I just need to build a tough heart so that I won't be scared of anything. Peter seemed inspired. He clenched his fist and raised it determined. Determinedly, sorry. Then let us begin the training. I will become a better version of myself that I can be proud of. And I shall challenge myself here in the human realm. I'll no longer be the sensitive parasite in due time. Good for you, sweetie. Good for you. Here you go. See? Look, Chi screaming in the background. Start of training. She's fucking adorable. I love it. But we're going to stop here. It's the perfect time. So, we'll start his training in the next part. I will see you next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.